this little guy going. All right, so for today, make sure it's following, we are going to be talking about resumes. Um, so last week I asked you guys to bring a resume if you already had a copy that you've been using. If you don't, that's totally okay. Um, we'll be going over several templates um, and we'll be helping you guys create one if we need to create one from scratch or maybe updating one that we already have um, and kind of critiquing it. So rule number one is that there are few rules. Um, what do you guys think the purpose of a resume is? It's already been much done. <laughs> kind of an overview, kind of like showcasing. Yeah, an overview, showcasing an individual. What else? Any other thoughts? Yeah, so showing your qualifications for whatever you're applying for. Perfect. So there's not really a perfect format or structure. We're going to talk about a couple of different types of resumes, uh, but there's not really necessarily a right or wrong way to do it, and there's several different adaptations of resumes. Um, again, there's no specific category rules, um, and almost every rule has a reason to break it, and so we'll talk about some of those instances. Um, but some top recommendations are to have relevant information, so having information that actually applies to the job that you are applying for. Um, so if one of your special skills is that you're really awesome at rock climbing or underwater basket weaving or something like that, but it's not really applicable to the job you're applying for, don't include it on there. Um, and also being well organized and having good format. Can we have access to PowerPoint? Yes. Oh, to this PowerPoint? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'll provide it for you guys. And I've got several handouts I'll give you as well. Um, so there's really three different types of resumes, and we're going to be talking about a reverse chronological and a functional, and then there's also a combination um, reverse chronological and functional. Poor swivel, it's going to be going all over the place, people watching this, I'm sorry. Um, so the reverse chronological is kind of the traditional resume format, kind of looking at our traditional applicant, it's what we're going to see most often. Um, this is for recent high school or college graduates, which I think we all fall into that category, being in college right now. Um, it's for a profession related to college training or certification, looking at steady progress in one profession, so kind of tracking that steady progress as we're going through school, you know, we're entering a career and kind of tracking that similar progress. Um, also looking at promotions or salary increases um, and plans to stay in the current profession. And so, I'll go ahead and tap out. Of course, we'll go. And I'll be posting these on D2L as well. So the functional resume, and I also have a handout for that one, um, this is for the more non-traditional applicants, so maybe somebody who's been out of the workforce for a while, maybe they're returning to the workforce, um, maybe their job experiences are a little varied, um, or maybe they've even switched professions, so they've kind of gone from different disciplines um, to other disciplines. Um, they might be entering the profession different from their formal college training or certification, and again, frequent job changes. So some of the components of an effective resume, the first one is going to be identification. Thank you. So as you can see at the top, you know, we have our name, we have all of our contact information, um, we have our address, email address, phone numbers, somehow that our employers or potential employers can reach us. Um, we want to have a career objective. We'll talk a little bit more about that and how we want that to be really specific to the actual position that we're applying for. And so for each position that you're applying for, you might have to change or update that career objective. 
So rather than just having a really broad overarching objective, um, tailoring that to each specific job application. Also looking at our education, um, our employment, our professional skills, military experience if that's applicable for you, um, and also professional affiliations. And so we can see we have our Jafar, we have his resume. Um, he has his qualification summary, his work experience, working as royal vizier, right hand of the sultan, attempted to take the throne, excellent skills at beard growing, beard twisting, etc. So for our identification, we want to have our name, our addresses. Um, if you're in school, you can list your current school address, but you can also list a permanent home address if you would like to. Or if you would rather just have your current school address, or if you're in an apartment here in Stillwater or a house, you know, you have an actual physical address here, um, you can list either or. Um, also email addresses. It's important um, to list a professional looking one. So if you have um, kind of a, a goofy Gmail one that's kind of personal and maybe not as professional, um, you probably want to have your okstate.edu email address so that it looks pretty professional. Um, if you have a website, you can put that on there. Again, as long as it's professional, it's something that you would want employers to see. Um, I have fax number on there. I don't think anybody really uses a fax number anymore. I know we always still list it just in case there is somebody wanting to fax. Um, so if there is a number, you can go ahead and list that. So here's just a couple examples. We have Joe Jobs. So he has his address here at the top, his phone number, um, his email address. Um, and then on this example, he has both his school address as well as his permanent address. And so you can list both on there if you want to. So for the career objectives, we want it to be specific to the job we're applying for. So we already mentioned that we might tailor that to each different application that we're working on. Um, so a bad example might be looking for a job where I can use my skills and progress in the company. It's not bad, but it's pretty broad. Um, you know, it could apply to any job situation. So we'd want to tailor that a little bit more. Um, so a good example might be employment where I can use my graphic art skills and customer service expertise to help an advertising company land new clients. So much more specific, much more directed to that specific job application. So for education, obviously we want to have the degree. If we're working on a degree, um, we'll list that. If we have any minors or specializations um, or special certificates, we can also list that. Um, also the name of the school, where the school is located, so Oklahoma State University, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Um, the year that you'll be graduating or anticipated graduation. Um, so you might put May 2018 expected graduation date. Um, and GPA. Usually we say if it's above 3.0 to list it on there. GPA isn't a have to. Um, if you feel like it's competitive and you want to put it on there, you're more than welcome to. If it's something you'd just rather leave off, that's totally fine too. So here's just another example. So they have their degree, Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. They have their school, um, the number of years that they've been there. So you could put the time span that you've been at that particular place to help give them a time reference. They put their GPA, and then they also listed some specific um, qualifications that goes along with their degree. So they have expertise um, in HVAC, road construction, EPA compliance, president of student, student civil engineering club, um, some of the awards that they won. So things that are specific to their education. Any questions on education? Okay. And then just a few other examples. Um, and it doesn't, there's not really a right or wrong way to list these in order, just as long as you have all of this information there. Oops. Yes, sir. So what if you have multiple degrees? Like how do you break that down? Sure. So um, what I would do is list the degree that you're working on currently as the first one. So going in chronological, reverse chronological order. So if you're currently at OSU, you'd list that first. 
your anticipated graduation date, and then below that, like if you have an associate's degree or if you were at a junior college, list those underneath. Good question. So for employment, see if I can just get this to stay. Maybe. Okay, I'll just leave that focus there. So for employment, we want to have our job title. Again, if we're doing a reverse chronological resume, we're going to have our current job that we're at first, and then we're going to work backwards chronologically. So if I'm working as a student worker here at OSU, I'm going to list that first. Um, I'll list the company name, company location, the duration of the job. So if I started a year ago, I would list the month, uh, 2017 to current, showing that I'm still working in that position, I'm still here. Um, and then also job responsibilities. And so you want to be specific, but not too specific. Like you don't want to use too much um, jargon or language that employers might not understand. Um, so for example, during my undergrad, I was working for the USDA um, at a cotton research laboratory, and I ran this really specialized <coughs> equipment. Um, and so originally I had that on my resume, like I ran the LS230 Coulter machine. And somebody looked over it and they're like, what the heck is an LS230 Coulter machine? It's like, okay, that makes sense. So you might just say something like, you know, I ran specialized equipment um, used to test, you know, whatever it may be. So specific, but not too specific. So action verbs are a big must. Um, so for this example, they show that they're the assistant manager, where they're at, the location. They started in 2003 and they're still there. And so they use a lot of action verbs. So they tracked and maintained over $25,000 in inventory. So very specific. It's showing how much money they were managing. Um, and it's showing that they were tracking, they were actively working in this. They trained a minimum of four new employees quarterly. So again, being very specific, showing how many people they trained. They achieved a 10% growth in customer card count for three consecutive years. Again, being very specific, showing that 10% growth. Um, and developed a written manual. So really trying to accentuate and use those action verbs. So for your professional skills section, you want to highlight things that are unique. But again, we also want it to be applicable to the job we're applying for. So again, like the underwater basket weaving, unless that applies to the job position, we don't want to include that. That might be something that comes up um, in an interview if you get selected to come interview. Um, you know, you can talk a little bit more about some of your specialized skills, but for the resume, we want to keep it uh, specific and focused on the job we're applying for. Um, some key items to include, if you speak any additional languages, um, that's always a good one to put on there. If you have specific computer skills, um, so for example, if you're proficient um, with Microsoft Office, so you know how to use Word, PowerPoint, Excel, um, you know, all the different Microsoft Office package programs. Um, another example is knowledge of HTML, Java, Visual Basic, so some of you AgCom, AgEgg folks, if there's specific um, design software you guys know how to use, and that's specific to the job application you can have on there. Um, if you have any certifications, so here they said they were um, OSHA hazardous management safety trainers, so they were certified in that. Um, and then also fluent in Spanish. So again, having um, you know, a good way to showcase those professional skills. Any questions on professional skills? What to include, what not to include? So military experience, if this is applicable, um, you can have your rank, your discharge status, if that applies, um, any areas of expertise you may have, training required, um, and also your years of experience. For professional affiliations, um, this may or may not apply. Um, if you want to list this on there and you have room, you can list clubs or organizations to which you belong. Um, if you are a member, if you are an officer, if you have an active role within that organization, um, definitely feel free to list those, especially if they are applicable to the job that you're applying for. 
Um, so for example, like some of the jobs that I've been looking at within teaching and extension, um, being a member of the National 4-H Agents Association <coughs> looks really good, um, showing that you are an active member of that organization, you like staying current on what's going on, um, you know, and staying up to date with that professional affiliation. So looking at um, experience or qualifications or skills, we want to have things that are transferable. And by transferable, I mean that it can be applicable to several different jobs, um, that it's not just specific for one job, that it has transferability. Um, so relevant duties, skills learned or used or developed, knowledge gained, um, or contributions or accomplishments achieved. We also want to think beyond what did I do and think about what can I do for this organization? What are some of the specific skills that I bring to the table that will be applicable for this position? And then also we talked about using those action verbs, um, using really strong words to show action, like I did this, I'm doing this, these are important things that <laughs> I'm doing. So again, a few more um, examples of experience, um, and I really like this one. Um, I think it's very clean, everything's very orderly. Um, I like how they underline their specific position, again, working in reverse chronological order. Uh, so for communications intern, they list Department of Biosystems and Ag Engineering, so the specific department they were in. Um, they also list that that was at Oklahoma State University. They list the time frame that they were there. And then they list a few bullet points that are specific to that job. I usually try to always have at least um, three key bullet points that kind of describe what I did in that position. And then again, working as an intern, working as a student assistant. So I really like how they organize this one. And then again, just another example, um, qualifications, they just bulleted them, looking at clear comprehension of how um, ag marketing systems operate, understanding of futures markets and hedging strategies, so things that are very specific um, to the job that they might be applying for that are applicable. Um, and then again, experience, you know, being very specific, underlining and bolding um, the title that they're currently in, where it's at, um, their specific duties as well. Any questions on experience? So things that a resume should do. They should promote your skills, talents, and education, much like advertising or selling a product. Really, you are selling you. You are out there to make yourself look good. You are selling you. Um, this can be kind of hard for us sometimes, um, you know, to kind of brag on ourselves and say, man, look at all these awesome things I'm doing, um, pick me, but this is kind of your opportunity to showcase what makes you unique and why you are the best person for the position. Your resume should be easy to read, logical to follow, and very professional in appearance. Um, so we'll talk some more about what a resume should not do and some bad examples of resumes. It should describe the education, experience, and skills that make you desirable for employment. It should demonstrate good writing skills and be error-free. So definitely be sure and look it over several times, run word check on it, or spell check, I should say. Have a few people look at it. Um, you know, this is a reflection of you, and so you want it to be very professional, easy to read. Um, it should also create a good first impression and should lend itself to easy modification. Um, so for me, I have several examples of my resume. Um, right now I have a curriculum vita, which is ridiculously long now. Um, but we're just focusing on resume and not focusing on vitas. Um, but it's important that you kind of have several versions of it. Um, so if maybe there's more specific jobs that you're applying for that it would fit a little better, um, it lends itself to easy modification. And we'll talk about that as well with cover letters on Wednesday. The things that a resume should not do, um, it should not be difficult to read or hard to follow. So we don't want to have a lot of crazy font. We want it to be very legible, very easy to read. Um, you know, there is room for creativity and having kind of your own unique stamp on it. Um, but we want it to be easy to read. We want it to be legible. So no crazy font. 
Um, it should not contain personal information such as your age or marital status, um, sex, religion, national origin, health status, or early background. You know, that's okay. Like, we, we don't really need to know all the extra stuff. Um, don't include any information that brings up more questions than it answers. Um, we don't want to get ourselves backed up into a hole or anything if we're in an interviewing situation and they're like, oh, tell me more about this. What happened in this situation? And if it's not something you want um, you know, completely publicized or maybe not something you want to share as much, don't put it on your resume. Um, don't include pictures, salary history, jargon, unexplained abbreviations um, or weaknesses kind of going on the same thing. We're wanting to put our best foot forward um, presenting ourselves in a very good and positive light. Um, definitely don't make demands of any kind. Um, you know, we talked a little bit last week with Amy about salary um, and negotiating, and so if we're in an interviewing situation, um, we don't want to be making any demands. What's the pay? What, you know, what's my salary going to be? Um, if they're wanting to offer you the job, you know, it'll get brought up. Um, and also don't include samples of workshop presentations that you have done. Um, this one, and Amy talked a little bit about it too, she talked about having a portfolio. Um, if there are specific instances where, you know, the job might want you to have um, something to, like some kind of work to showcase. Um, so like at Com, if you have writing samples or different things like that, if they specifically ask for that, it's totally fine. So some common mistakes, um, a failure to translate work duties into <coughs> skills. You okay there? Yeah. <laughs> Big yawn. Um, another common mistake is um, not showing your accomplishments. You know, again, this is kind of the time to brag on yourself a little bit um, and showcase some of those accomplishments that you have. Um, another common mistake is having irrelevant facts or negative information being too general um, so that it doesn't hit the target for that particular job. So again, kind of tailoring our resume so that it's specific for that job that we're applying for. Um, a big one is more pages than necessary. And we'll talk a little bit more about that too. We really want it to be like one to two pages at max. Because especially if we're at a career fair um, or if we're meeting with several potential employers, we just want to have that one piece of paper we can hand out. Um, because you don't want to have to mess with stapling them and losing pages, so really if you can keep it to one page. Um, and then a format that's not easy to scan, um, especially like if you're sending or uploading things electronically, making sure that you know they're going to be transferable, they can be uploaded easily, accessible easily. So what are some things that kind of jump out to you with this particular resume? Well, picture's not professional. Should we even have a picture? No. 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 We don't want to have a picture on there. What else? You do like the name header? <laughs> what else? All the colors start to start to lose. Font? Yeah. Yes. So it's not easy to read all the different colors, all the different font. It's pretty small. What else? Two pages long. That's two pages long. Screen rate coordinator, I booked a flight to college. Yeah, is that relevant? No. <laughs> Up here, she's also got um, her email. It's a little hard to see, but it's glittergal1999. Probably not the most professional one. Um, she has her social, social security number on there. Um, her marital status, that she's single, um, religion. <laughs> and following the Jonas Brothers. I think. They're on tour. Joe Bros. Yeah, <laughs> following the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> and this is a good point to bring up, too. She listed her high school, middle school, and elementary school. Do you think all of that's relevant? No. An employer is not going to care where you went to middle school or elementary school. She has her political. Yes, yeah, she had their political affiliations. We don't want to bring that up. That's not something to have on there. She put references are available upon request, but here are some now. 
Yep, just to find a job. <laughs> so definitely, um, definitely honest, but very, very broad. With exclamation. Yeah, yeah. with exclamation <laughs> point. Three. Three. Yeah, three. Two. Uh, probably guess two. Her first one called. Oh, yeah. Funny. Yeah, energetic, enthusiastic, reliable, funny, courageous, witty, smart, flexible. <laughs> so are those things we really want to include on there? No. Is this real? No, it's one I found on the internet. <laughs> At least I hope it's not real, that somebody is, like, actively putting this out there. I hope not. So this is, like, the worst example you could find of everything not to do. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that I would uh, be interested in my left. <laughs> so some general guidelines, and um, we talked a little bit about length. Ideally, we want to keep it to one page. Um, personally, for me, like I keep my resume to one page, but then I also have a reference page, um, and so I'll show an example of that as well. Um, so if you can staple those, keep those together, um, that would be my recommendation, but your resume itself, keeping it to one page. Appearance, we want it organized and consistent, um, having high quality conservative colored paper. Um, you might even get it professionally printed somewhere like Kinko's or FedEx, or if you have access to a good printer, um, you know, that, that definitely helps a lot. Because I know sometimes my printer at home is a little janky and you know, it just messes things up. So make sure that it looks nice, that it's printed professionally. Um, also, no typos or grammatical errors. And so again, double checking it, have somebody else look at it a few times. Um, and that goes for jargon as well. Um, if you think that it's something that you understand really clearly and can talk about, but maybe showing it to somebody else and they're like, what is this? I don't understand what this is. Um, that might be something to adjust. Is there, like I, I guess that you can't be um, dumped down too much, but is there too, like a level of, like, duh, you don't need to put, you don't need to write that out, you know, everyone knows about me, so is there like a too much that? I would say it kind of depends on the audience. Um, like if you know, like obviously we're all ag related and if we're applying for an ag related position, you know, we're probably going to be on the same page as far as jargon. Um, but if you're applying for something in a totally different discipline and you're talking about your ag background, right. you might want to be more specific, um, you know, because they might not be as familiar with that. Okay. Good question. Um, margins, we want to keep it to about a one inch border. Um, you know, we don't want it too wide, but we don't want it too crimped in the middle. Um, again, professional font, non-footed, um, no smaller than 11 point. Um, you know, I try to keep it about 12 point font because um, we want it legible, we want it easy to read. And again, using something, uh, or using a font that's legible. You don't have to just use Times New Roman or Arial, uh, but something that's easy to read. So, well, that's a good question. So, like, I'll show, um, I think I've got one of mine pulled up. So this is an example um, of my reference list. And so I did use two different fonts. Um, I kept this header on both my resume and my reference list, so that's exactly the same. Um, so if somebody were to look at both of them, they're like, oh, okay, these are both for Haley Rothman. Um, but then my references, I did Times New Roman. So just an example. But so I, I would say, Use different fonts cautiously. Don't get too crazy like not Lila. Like yeah, not like, not no, no, not like Lila. <laughs> but I would say like two different fonts are okay. Not getting too crazy. Again, we talked about the content. We want it relevant to the position. Um, begin the resume with your strongest information. So usually, um, if we're working in order, we'll have our career objectives and our education and our experiences. Um, if education is your strength, list it first. If work experience is your strength, list it first. Um, there's not really a rule that says you have to list one over the other. Um, it's really your preference. I list my education first and then work experience, but that's totally up to you guys. 
Um, don't be cute or fancy. So like Lila is using all the different crazy fonts and colors. Um, you know, there is room to express your individuality, but you know, keep it within reason. Um, don't use passive phrases. This says don't use a template. Um, I, I kind of agree and disagree with this one. If you can find a template that works for you, that is easy to modify, um, I think it's okay to use a template. Um, I've just kind of made mine from scratch, not using a template, but it's really your preference. Um, you don't want it too wordy, so you don't want like this huge paragraph that's a description of what you currently do. Um, so trying to keep it pretty short, to the point, um, succinct. Um, and then also avoid I. Um, we'll talk about that more in the cover letter. The cover letter is more of our chance to say, this is what I have done. This is what I am doing. Um, so for the resume, we kind of want to avoid using that first person. Okay. No, I actually, um, these have been shared with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, this is yeah, impressive. Like, but at some point, somebody did. Yeah. So <laughs> kudos to them.
Okay, so who had Jill Cowgirl? All right, so tell us about Jill. What's going on with her resume? Good things, bad things? Uh, Format-wise, okay. Um, there's one thing is the permanent address. I wouldn't have it down at the bottom. Okay, so she's got it down here at the very bottom. Okay. And, okay, so where's the bank teller? Under, it's... I, down below the Stila Bullock, I can't pronounce that. Stila Bullock? Stila Bullock? Whatever, it's, it's a Monday. <laughs> um, I don't think I would do that. I don't know. So she's kind of got like the sub bullets to the bullets. Yeah, why? Yeah. Uh, I would. She could have used something a little, a little more clean and, and professional, or a little more professional sounding. Yeah, um, or probably just had the one, the and smooth at cowboy.com, because mm -hmm. that gets a little confusing too for an employer if there if there's multiple email addresses. Yeah. What else? Um, and then we noticed like the font sizes in the middle of the page. Um, 
under the bullet points under art teacher field experience so mm -hmm. two different sizes yeah uh, and then I personally just didn't like how the dates were kind of just randomly kind of put in there I feel like they should be more stand out either at the very beginning or set off on the side of the page yeah to make them stand out a little more mm -hmm. and um, her objective we felt like she could have like been a little more specific or worded it a little been a little more uh, um, pretty broad yeah um, activities isn't bolded like the rest of it yeah mm -hmm. it looks like she's got different bullet points under bullet activities than she does the rest um, of the resume oh, yeah. so keeping it consistent and she's under uh, Oklahoma State University alumni association. She has misspelled association multiple times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we kind of felt like um, in that situation. I mean, as an alumni association is kind of you, you. I mean, you know, you're going to be in that for a lifetime member. So we felt like that was necessary for her to put put that specifically. Yeah. So not really relevant to the position she's applying for. Right. And then lastly, we put um, at least have two references instead of just. Yes, and I would also move it to a separate page oh, okay. instead of having it on that first resume page. Okay. What about Billy Bob? Oh, Tell us about Billy Bob. Font is awful. Yeah, yeah font, font is terrible. Um, we didn't like how like the headers. There's no distinction between them, so okay. there's be a line or something under there. It was like bolded for a different so font. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he didn't list an email, which I mean, I I'm sure that like not everybody has emails, but I feel like you should at least like, at this point in time. Like, yeah. I don't know his personal stance. So. Uh, he also didn't list years for like his work history. Like in the childcare, he stated something about working there for three years in the summer, but other than that, it didn't give like a present, like this is my current job, or yeah. any standpoint of like how long he. Education. It says um, Oklahoma State University, 19,997 is the date. He also didn't put his degrees for like what he earned in those. So maybe he just went by the day. Yeah. So he didn't like <laughs> it. <laughs> it says maybe in reverse chronological order. Yeah. So we've got high school, AM, Oklahoma State. Okay. And then um, there's no years under the relevant experiences or awards or. And the interest in activities is just kind of random. Yes. It's kind of there. Yeah, and it's kind of in a weird spot, too. Yeah, usually, usually that should be the bottom. Yeah, usually we would kind of put that toward the end. Yeah. Your experiences. But yeah. Yeah, and if it were me, I would just get rid of his whole interest in activities mm -hmm. section. The like it's well. not really relevant, just get rid of it. I think that's a good point on the activities. If it's something that's relevant, like it shows that you developed these specific skills, you know, and it's applicable to the job you're applying for, then maybe include it. Um, but yeah, some of the things like the I Wonder Fair, you know, it's kind of like, is this relevant to anything? So, well, for the sake of time, I'll really.
real quickly. You guys can hang on to them if you want to. That's bad example. <laughs> so this assignment um, is going to be due next Wednesday, um, but I wanted to go ahead and go over this because um, I will be scheduling meetings with each of you guys. Um, so you guys will be creating an effective resume and cover letter. So like we talked about, if you already have a resume, um, kind of based on what we've been talking about, if you want to update it, add to it, totally start from scratch, uh, whatever you guys would like to do, but you will have a resume and a cover letter. Um, and over this next week, um, I will have you guys schedule an appointment with me. Um, so you'll bring your resume, you'll bring your cover letter, you will find an actual position that you're interested in applying for. Um, and so you'll bring all of that whenever you meet with me. I'll go over your resume, we'll go over cover letter, you know, we'll see if there's any room for um, you know, critiques or improvements or what we need to work on. Um, so actually due on Wednesday, you'll have to bring the position announcement. Um, it can be something that you're just, you're interested in applying for, you are going to apply for. Um, it could be, you know, whatever capacity you want it to be. Um, you'll bring your final cover letter, your final resume, um, and you'll also bring your original cover letter and resume that you brought like to the meeting with me. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you'll bring both versions of resumes and cover letters. So the, the position announcement, um, what all are, do you just need like website information, this is what it is, this is where it is, this is what they tell about it? Okay. Yeah, so if it's just like listed online somewhere, it's just like this is the job, these are the job requirements, and you know, just print off the posting. What if you already have a cover letter? You can use the same one, um, and if you want to update it or any way like that, um, we can also do that. Because we'll be covering cover letters on Wednesday. Okay. Are the meetings going to be like from this week, like Wednesday, Friday, yes. Monday, or is it going to be like Wednesday, Friday, Monday? Or is it, it can be any time this week um, through Monday and Tuesday of next week, okay. if that makes sense. Do we just email you, or are you going to have like a doodle poll thing? Or Actually. Let's do. Can we do an Excel thing that we did? Yeah, I can do a Google Doc and send that to you guys. Would that work? I love having trouble trying to. Yeah. <laughs> no, it <laughs> should be good this time. <laughs> Third time's the charm. Do <laughs> you have an appointment uh, right now? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't have any appointments booked as of right now, so. Yeah. Let me go ahead. I'll stop our recording. Um, but do you guys have any other questions about the assignment or anything? Okay. So we came to get those appointments to you today? Yes.